name's Richard Cook. I'm uh, here to tell you the story of how I first got involved with fast jets. The next thing that happened was that I was commissioned by Austin Reed magazine to uh, take some pictures of the of the lightning for an article for their um, magazine that they sent out to all their customers. They made the arrangements and I went up to Binbrook uh, to um, do the photography. The arrangement with the lightning is different from the Jaguar. Uh, the lightning on the, the T-Bird or two-seater, uh, the seats were arranged side by side, uh, whereas in the Jaguar they're one behind the other or tandem. So this meant that uh, in the lightning I could see everything that the pilot could see. So we had a trip in the morning. The weather was perfectly good. Uh, we had, I wish I was taking pictures of another lightning. I wanted to take pictures of the aircraft going straight up because that's what lightnings do. I'm afraid I rather exceeded my um, altitude uh, limit as far as my decompression was concerned because uh, going straight up, you know, when I ask for one more and one more, hold it, and hold it, can I just hold that? You haven't got to hold it for long when you're going straight up in a lightning and you soon reach one heck of a height and uh, the sky was looking very dark at one point and, um, and I think we probably topped out at about 50,000 feet on that one. But I did a few other pictures um, out of the canopy, obviously out of the right hand side because the pilot was on the left. We came down to land and uh, had some lunch. In the afternoon we thought we'd try and get another sortie in um, and so took off again, although the weather had got a lot, a lot worse and uh, the weather forecast wasn't very good either and there were some questions as to whether we had time to, um, to get another sortie in really. Uh, but the lightning uh, duration is very short, it has very short range, um, so it was only going to be, you know, probably a 20 minute flight anyway. Uh, so we took off and uh, went up and did some more pictures uh, with a different aircraft this time, 11 squadron aircraft I think. When we got down we found that the, the cloud had come in underneath us whilst we were up in the sunshine and it was not looking at all good the weather um, and it was bad out over the sea uh, which was going to be relevant. We sort of circled the airfield on the approach to landing. My pilot said we have uh, two green lights Without knowing anything much about the aircraft, uh, I knew which green lights they were and what they meant. There are supposed to be three green lights, which indicate that you've got three wheels down and locked in the undercarriage. Uh, we only had two. So we went around the airfield again and uh, retracted the undercarriage, uh, went round again pulling a lot of G, and then put the undercarriage down whilst pulling the G so that it threw the wheels down to hopefully um, get them locked into place. But that didn't work, we still only had two green lights. You can't do a wheels up landing in a Lightning because the whole of the bottom of the aircraft is a fuel tank and uh, it's, you just can't do it even on grass. If you have a big problem with the undercarriage, the standard thing is to eject over the sea. Well, the sea was not in a good state and that was not gonna be good fun today. So we flew low and slow by the tower they all got their binoculars out and uh, looked at us and you know, said, well, it looks like three wheels down to us. We decided, or they decided, I should say, that the most likely thing was that one of the bulbs had gone um, on the uh, indicator for the undercarriage. So they decided to make what uh, was called a uh, precautionary landing, which was a normal landing on the runway with the wheels down just on the assumption that one of the bulbs had gone out. We landed perfectly normally, except that we came to a halt um, at a point where there were four or five fire engines on either side of the runway, pointing hoses and sort of uh, wondering if they were going to be dealing with a, a ball of flame. <laughs> that obviously didn't happen. Since I, this was my second uh, quite eventful fast jet experience and um, it seemed that there was never a dull moment as far as fast jets were concerned so I'm afraid I was I was bitten by the bug. Next time I'll tell you the story what happened when I met the red arrows.